Hello, everyone. Um, oh, uh, welcome back. I know, again, for me, I've been rather consistent on my movie reviews. Um, with a 10 foot to flex with the camera. Ooh, like that. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah, I have a couple of movie reviews for you guys to see. Because I got to see a few recently within the last two or three weeks. I saw Captain Momo and... I don't know what that was. Hold on. Probably Pesky Animal. <laughs> um, Captain Marvel and Hellboy in the same weekend, and then the next weekend, which was about two to three weeks ago, or something like that. I saw Shazam last weekend, I believe. Yeah, or something like that. And then yesterday, I, that was a weird voice. <laughs> you got to see my voice crack, even though I was cracked when I was a teenager. Uh, regardless, Yesterday I got to saw uh, Avengers Endgame, which I'm still mentally processing, and I'm probably, of course, like everyone else, going to see it again next week, because I have a job. <laughs> Regardless, I'm going to come back to you guys as always. Um, my first review for today is, um, I'm going to give you two reviews today, and then two, maybe one or two tomorrow, depending, okay, I'm, I don't know if I'll do a review for Avengers Endgame, because, um, yeah, I'm still processing now. I'm probably need a second view to really get everything sink in and really watch more stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, regardless, my first review for you guys is Captain Marvel, directed by both Anna Bondin and Ryan Fleck, who are essentially indie directors. And this is the very, and this is the 21st MCU movie. And within this movie, you got Brie Larson as Carol Danvers, aka um, Captain Marvel, in this movie, she's discovering her own history within her, the race of her, that she was brought up in, in space, but also how that reflects her upbringing on Earth and how it's to conf essentially conflict and make her. <coughs> Excuse me, God, let me back. Back in my throat. Um, but how those reflect her origins coming up, essentially, and how she was trained by Jude Law and how she begins a buddy co op angle with. I'm Samuel L. Jackson, and a friend of hers who's named Rambo or something like that from the military. It's been a while. But, um, all that is bringing up, of course, and here's the thing. I want to say this before I get any more deeper into the movie. This has to be one of the first legitimately not good MC movies in a while. Not since Thor or Thor Thor Two or Iron Man Two have I not liked an MC movie this much. Like when I say of all the MC movies in the last two or three years, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, as much as I love that film, is the weakest. Or one of the weakest. And that speaks in how damn good of even Iron Man Two and Thor and Thor Two, which I. I like to certain degrees, but I don't think I really divorce things ever. It's like, is when you is when you mentally start to count your blessings for the MCU for how technically um, great of caliber films they make. So it shocks to me that there's a lot I really didn't like about Captain Marvel. Now, to be fair, it is even the MCU, even the best MCU movies aren't perfect adaptations. I know that. I acknowledge that. Even my favorites are like that. Iron Man One, Thor Ragnarok, Civil War are among, among the best. And those aren't even 100% accurate to their material. But Captain Marvel, <coughs> they're in this water. I'm guessing that's Um, If Captain Marvel has going for it, um, ha, uh, I'll start off with its strengths. Number one, Brie Larson, by all means, is a great cast. She has a cool look, cool stoicism, and innate strength and courage in the thing that you would see her in the comics to really make this role pop. Her banter with Samuel L. Jackson when it's just them and focusing on them, there's something legitimately there that I liked. Also, um, oh, what the hell is his name from Ready Player One and um, Star Wars um, Ben Mendelsohn as a villain. I'm like, this is, even though, again, he's not like the top five best MCU villains, I'm like, 
this I surprisingly really got with his um, angle, and I really liked his arc as well. Also, Jude Law and his banter, Digimon Huntsu from Guardians, and went into this film, uh, and how, because, you know, this is, like, in the 90s, you see her, because, of course, it takes place in the 90s, and she's wearing a fucking nine-inch nail shirt, um, regardless, um, uh, it's in the movie, like, those moments are the, the strengths, some of the chemistry, also, the cat, goose, has to be one of the best cats in film, in recent memory, <laughs> it's great. Um, I love that cat. Um, those are definitely the movie's strengths. The rest of the movie is a bit of a f fucked up mess. No. Don't expect me from the caliber of what you typically you get from the MCU. That's kind of unforgivable. No, the strengths are good, but I do feel like this is the first, even at the worst MCU movies, it's like, their strengths compared to the weaknesses are still like, fine. So this is, for me, this is the first... Um, I hate to say I didn't like Captain Marvel, but I was greatly underwhelmed by this movie. It was, it, the tone didn't feel like there was as vibrant as it needed to be. Like the colors are there, but you know, again, the way the MCU movies are being shot now, not being on shot, uh, not being shot on film, but on IMAX or something else like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. Um, but, um, the visuals don't really as pop as they say, like, you know, Wonder Woman, or Hellboy, or the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, um, again, something about the visuals, they don't really pop as they need to, they're not as vibrant or as memorable as they should be, these great, beautiful, inspiring moments, um, uh, they're kind of underwritten, most of the performances are... Kind of just forgettable, especially Brie Larson as, um, as this role, because truth be told, she's a great casting for the role, but you don't give her anything to work with. She never goes through anything. From the beginning, from story A through Z, she never changes. She never grows. There's nothing there for her to be that. And I understand when a character is like that, and they're placing too big a role with another shit going on, like a good example of that is Max. Mad Max very well with Tom Hardy. That's the character who never changes, but because we like him so much, it's because he's so wrapped up within these other characters in the, in a, in the movie that are just as exciting and more developed than he is. In this movie, everything is painted and shown and portrayed so straightforward and so narratively focused on the, on the script and so much, so much going on, it, it kind of takes itself a bit too seriously. There's not... Uh, the humor... The humor kind of feels like an afterthought. Everything just, just kind of takes itself too seriously. And I wish they kind of had a little bit more fun and leniency to this film. Play it more like a 90s comedy. Actually, normally I think of that, that would have been worse. <laughs> but regardless, of this, it's like... Gab yeah, Marvel is a bit of a mixed bag. It's, it's like a big little... Meh. How's the performances in this movie? They're alright. This is are good. This is are forget about how. And when you when I when a superhero movie where you're forced to say the main performance wasn't as good as everyone else, that's a bit of a shock. So I can't help but feel like it's a bit of a letdown in the movie. The writing isn't as sharp as it used to be, there's nothing for it to work with. The chemistry with someone is with everyone is on and off at times. It depends who she's with. Uh, Sam Jackson or her own mentor, Pumi Jugod, or Jujuba. All these other great actors in the movie. <coughs> I'm wearing my coffee so much. Um. Oh, God. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um. For, you know, I could summarize the movie as a yawn, really. Dr. Marvel for me is a bit of a forgettable film, really. And I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a 54% of the one. Um, if you if you were to ask me where does this fall within my ranking of the 21, um, not including Endgame, the 21 in, of the M2 movies, this is definitely within the bottom three. 
of the not the not the best, but the bottom three worst. This is like going to this movie. I was like, okay, there's so many people online saying, "Oh, this movie sucks," and Brie Larson is ruining the MCU. After this movie, I'm like, fucking maybe there's some truth to that. I'm like, maybe the, the, the outraging fans, um, instead of shutting them out as the tip, as the majority of the internet does, part of me was like, fuck. Maybe they were right. Regardless. Um, but, yeah, Captain Marvel is a bit of a mixed bag. With ultimately the strengths, uh, I mean, with the, ultimately my view that with this is, and I can't, get this, in my mind, I can't give it a fresh review. It's technically well done, but it's kind of a, it's more subjectively a bad film than intended. It's more subjectively bad than technically bad of a film. So, yeah, that's that. And thank you for watching the one. My, review, my rating overall for Captain Mobile is at 54%. I really do hope you enjoyed my review for you guys. And as always, um, click right here to subscribe or here, this is my last video. Regardless, on which side. Uh, thank you, subscribers, always. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in my next review, which will be of Shazam. Till then, peace.